Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to take a deep dive into paint additives. What they are, how you can use them, and how they can help you on your painting journey. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So if you've ever been in a game store or looked at a range of paints, you've undoubtedly seen seen painting additives. So these are things like thinner medium or flow improver or drying retardant or anything like that. And we're going to cover all of those today. Each of these though can be a little mystical as to exactly how to use them, what are they for, and how to get the best results out of them. So I'm going to tackle each of them in turn. We're going to talk about what they're good at, when you'd want to use them, and the pitfalls of each individual one. The first thing we'll talk about here though, before we get into the additives, is we need to understand paint itself. So before we begin with the, uh, the additives, what is actually in a bottle of paint? Well, acrylic paint consists of three elements, okay? Three basic elements, as all paints effectively do. The first is a binding agent, uh, a binder. And in our case, that is acrylic medium. Acrylic medium is water soluble. It dries and forms into a sort of crystal latticework, making it highly durable. And because it is water soluble, we'll talk about that in a second, that means it dries really quickly because as water evaporates, it dries. The second element in our paint is our solvent. And our solvent is water. We thin our paint with water. This is how our paint, acrylic paint, stays largely non-toxic. It's water and acrylic medium, neither of which are very toxic. I mean, I wouldn't drink acrylic medium or anything, but it's not gonna kill you uh, just for having fumes around, which is nice, unlike a lot of other paints. Uh, and so the solvent is how we thin the paint, how we break it down. And if you put too much water in, then the acrylic medium, the binder, can no longer bind. And that's when you get tide marks and coffee staining and all sorts of bad effects. The last element of our acrylic paints is pigment. Probably not too surprising, but this is what actually makes it have color, what makes it paint. Um, so, and there's lots of different pigments. Oftentimes they'll be, it's very rare that most of the hobby paints we use are single pigment, though some are. Uh, most of them are mixtures of different pigments to get to the varied and interesting colors we want to paint our tiny little plastic toys. Now, most hobby paints actually have additional elements in them as well. Uh, those three are sort of what makes up a basic paint. And there are a lot of artist grade paints out there that might only contain those three elements. However, it's uncommon for most of our hobby paints to consist of only those three things. Most of them already have additives in them. In fact, they probably already have some amount of like drying retardant or additional binding agent or uh, flow improver or things like that in them because paint ranges, when people, when companies are trying to make them, they want them to perform and act relatively uniformly. So they'll all be matte to roughly the same degree or they'll all have roughly the same amount of opacity or, or whatever, whatever the company's goal might be with the hobby paint range to make it easier to work with. But that's not how actual artist paints work. Artist paints are incredibly varied. Some are very glossy, some are very matte, some are satin, some are highly opaque, some are not. And you see that through simple identifications on the bottle. Most artist grade stuff actually has all of that very clearly spelled out. Um, but as our hobby is not for artists primarily, what I mean by that is like a lot of us who are just hobbyists, we just pick up and start painting because it's fun and we want to play with our toys. Uh, it's they simplify it. And so to simplify the paints down, you have to add a bunch of other junk in. So it's important to understand that when we're dealing with our paints, they already have some of this stuff present. And so we need to be careful sometimes of how much more we put into the mix. Let's start with the simplest and basic additive. What's often labeled as thinner medium or, some, or, uh, or something like that, but it's really just an acrylic glaze medium. All this is is just paint without the pigment. So usually this is some amount of acrylic medium and water uh, just ready to go. Uh, and this can be added very easily into your paint to, as it says, thin it down. And this is one of those things that's actually quite safe to add to paint in a decently large amount. 
all you will effectively do is dilute the ratio of pigment to binding agent without affecting the solvent. So the uh, by doing that, you're effectively going to make your paint thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner, turning it more and more and more translucent or effectively into a glaze. So if you've had problems making glazes in the past, thinner medium could be the exact answer for you uh, because it allows you to thin the paint while still keeping it so the pigment will evenly disperse across the surface. Uh, the difference between adding this and water is that the solvent, that is water, will break up the pigments, or sorry, the uh, binder's ability to actually form that crystal lattice and then deposit the pigment evenly across the surface. Not true when we thin with thinning medium or acrylic medium or whatever. Uh, in this case, it just spreads out more medium over the whole thing. And in fact, thinner medium can be a really interesting tool to do additional sort of feathering and blending where you just kind of apply it wet to a surface, apply your paint, and then blend into it. This is actually a really easy trick for making a glaze on a miniature. It's something you don't see a lot of people do, but it's a really fun way to use thinner medium that will keep your paint evenly distributed. So effectively, you just take an area of your miniature you want to blend into, you place some of that thinner medium there, wipe some of it wet across the surface, dip your brush into uh, the paint, apply the paint to one of the dry spots, and then swooshy, 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 bring it down into the area where the medium is there and still wet, and ta-da, it thins out quite naturally. Uh, so pretty cool trick with thinner medium, but all in all, if you're, if you're having trouble thinning paints or you find that they break down or you get a lot of coffee staining or anything like that, thinner medium is the way to go. Quite safe to use in relatively large amounts because it's just more binder. Next up, we have Flow Improver. Now, this gets labeled in a lot of different ways. Um, so, like, uh, you'll sometimes see it called Airbrush Flow Improver or just Flow Improver or lots of things like that. Uh, you can get this at the art store. And in fact, for all of these, I'm talking about the kind of pure versions of these. Gaming companies will often relabel these with goofy names. I will talk about that a little at the end. But with all of these, you can just go go to the art store and get big bottles of acrylic medium and flow improver and drying retardant. And that is the way to go if you want these. Don't buy these from, from hobby stores for the most part. There are a couple, like what you see me using here today from huge miniatures um, that I actually do support because they sell it in very large bottles at a very reasonable price. Uh, so they're actually a company I really like how they distribute this, not these tiny little bottles that are overpriced. Now, back to this. Flow improver. Uh, flow improver is responding to the reality of acrylic paints. So if I said you need a flow improver for oil paints, that wouldn't really make any sense. Uh, that's already in part of how you work with it, with its solvent, with white spirits. The problem is uh, water, our solvent in acrylic paints, well, it has a very high surface tension. If you've ever done the little trick where you put a drop of water or more drops of water on a penny and you can see it form the little convex surface, that's surface tension in play. Flow Improver is basically like dish soap. It breaks up that surface tension and makes it so the water doesn't bond as easily to each other and just flows out everywhere. So Flow Improver uh, will still thin your paints and that's an important thing to understand. Anything you're adding to the paint that isn't paint will thin the paint. Uh, this feels like a really obvious point, but it's one that's important to make in that you are reducing the opacity of your paint, the coverage of your paint, whether you're doing thinner medium flow improver or drying retardant. All of those will reduce those things. So you have to be careful with something like flow improver. If you add too much flow improver, your paint will simply stop working. This is one of the challenges. This one actually does have a sort of limit because if you apply, or if you get too much of it, not only will it uh, make it so there's no surface tension, but it'll also make it so the, the crystalline lattice of the acrylic medium can't ever set up because all of the liquid is too busy just whoosh, sliding right off the surface and going down into the recesses. You can accidentally make a sort of super wash that just will cause, cause coffee staining and that kind of thing everywhere. So with Flow Improver, less 
is definitely more. Flow Improver can be used to make your own washes. Uh, if you're just thinning your paint or an ink or anything like that, you can just uh, thin that out uh, with Flow Improver and you will get that response. A couple drops will make it so your paint acts like a wash flowing quickly into the recesses and staining the uh, flat surfaces and the upper surfaces less. Uh, so, and the more you add, the more that effect will be present. The other use of Flow Improver that I always uh, end up using it for is for freehand or sharp thin lines, or you know when you really need to get at that small space. So if you have trouble maybe getting eyeballs painted or uh, doing tattoos or you know really getting sharp edge highlights, a little dab of Flow Improver can actually really help you achieve that. Uh, just a, it doesn't take very much but a little bit of Flow Improver will help your paint just wick much more naturally and easily off the end of your brush because that same surface tension that's keeping that water droplet on top of the penny is also holding the water together in your brush and making it not want to go over and flow onto the other surface. One last tip for Flow Improver, I actually always put a few drops of it in my water, uh, like my paint water. So my paint water, I generally have like five, six, seven drops of Flow Improver in there. Uh, flow Improver is also sometimes called surfactant. There is a slight difference, but for the most part, we're just going to say they're the same thing here uh, because the nuances don't really matter too much for us in our particular hobby. And uh, I keep a couple of drops in there for two reasons. One, it will help release and get any paint out of your brush when you're swooshing your brush, brush around and cleaning it. So that's nice. Uh, and two, the fact that it, that we tend to often thin our paints with a little bit of water from our paint water cup. And so there's just a tiny bit of flow improver in then all of our paint, making it flow better and more naturally without ever ris really risking changing its properties. It's a very minor change, but I found it actually has a significant impact in the application of my paint and just makes it a lot easier for me to just get going and working quickly and doing sharp thin lines. Uh, so just some drops in your paint water and you're good to go. All right, our last major one is sometimes called slow dry medium or drying retardant or anything like this. But effectively, it is a medium that, and this may shock you, slows the drying time of acrylic paint. Acrylic paint, one of the reasons we love it is because it dries so fast. Unlike oil paint, which can take days or weeks to cure completely, uh, acrylic paints dry in a matter of seconds. Wonderful for having nice, fast, durable paint jobs and grinding our way through armies. Horrible when we need to achieve some nice, smooth blends. Drying retardant is a way that you can uh, increase the working time of your paint. The downside of it, though, is that a lot of drying retardants out there are utter and complete garbage. Uh, if you ever have a drying retardant that is a gel or something like that, that is useless. Get rid of that. That is no good. Uh, but there are many companies like what you see me using here that have perfectly liquid normal drying retardants. You can also buy this from the art store that works in the same way. Drying retardant can help you be uh, better uh, at achieving those nice buttery smooth blends. But you have to be very careful with it. So just like with Flow Improver, less is definitely more. Uh, if you add too much of this and you try to do something like wet blending, the problem is you will thin the paint so much, it then will get splotchy and won't effectively blend together. That being said, a little drop of uh, drying retardant on your palette and then sort of dipping your brush in and working with the paint and then dipping your brush in and working with the paint and then wet blending together in that way that can be a great tool. You need very little of this because you're not looking to extend the drying time of acrylic paint by five or six or seven or ten times. To allow for more efficient wet blending, you really only need to extend it by about twice as long. And it doesn't take much drying retardant to achieve that. So just a little bit in your brush when there's already, when your brush is already moist, will do most of the work you need. Last thing I want to talk about here is kind of a catch-all of these other gaming named things, glaze mediums and lamia mediums and stuff like this. All of those are just mixes 
of the existing things that I've talked about, sometimes with then also a varnish in there. So some of them might have a little bit of varnish, which is, I mean, we all know a varnish is to there to seal and it usually has a polyurethane base. It's there to protect our miniatures. But it'll either have some gloss or satin element in it or something like that. Uh, those I don't like as much, I'll be honest with you. So anything that isn't sort of clearly labeled in the ways that I've described here, I don't love because I don't know exactly what the mix is here. What's the ratio in this random product of thinner to flow improver to drying retardant to varnish to water? And most of these products contain all five of those things. It's just the ratios are wildly different, which achieves different effects. So it makes it hard to know exactly what to do. My advice to you is something like what you've seen me use here today, or go to your local sort of art and craft store, buy a big bottle. They're usually not that expensive. Um, and when I'm talking a big bottle, I mean, you'll get 10, 12, $15. You'll have a bottle that will last you the rest of your life. Uh, so that's a relatively good investment. And uh, those, you know, for sure what you're getting, what's in the bottle, they're, they're you know, artist grade stuff. And there you can then really control your ratios and make sure that you're not sort of uh, over thinning or suddenly hitting your paint with a bunch of properties that you didn't want, didn't need, and most importantly, didn't expect. And then fundamentally changing the properties of that paint in a way that then doesn't perform for you on the miniature. There we go. So that's your guide to the three main paint additives and some of these other products that are on the market. I hope this helps you and gives you some cool ideas for some neat stuff to try out in your own hobby. Um, this is all stuff that I utilize uh, quite frequently. So if you enjoyed this, hey, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. We have new videos here every Saturday. If you've got any questions about additives or mediums or anything like that that I didn't answer in this video, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every question asked. If you want to support the channel, it's very easy to do so. There's a merch store down there. There's links down there for Amazon to buy some of the stuff that we've talked about today. You can hit those up. Uh, you can, uh, of course, also join our Patreon. Uh, our Patreon is focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, we'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.